a lot of advisors way back when they didn't do the best job at building a financial plan. And part of that was it was dependent on the school of finance that you grew up in. Uh -huh. But there, then there became an evolution of <clears throat> this leather bound binder. And it almost became like this race to who could build the thickest, most yeah. data dense financial plan with all the charts and graphs yeah. and, and backing up all here's yeah. paying me this money because I'm doing such, you know, amazing planning. And now what I've started to see, and I know we have a mutual friend in Carl Richards who wrote a book called The One Page Financial Plan. Yes. Um, now we're almost starting to see it revert back the other way. And it's how can we simplify the complexity? And you know, if you're building on a CFP standard income, investments, taxes, healthcare, legacy estate, you know, all the worlds that that encompasses, that's a lot. But it's almost reverting back to can I get this complexity onto one page where it's simple and it makes sense to somebody that's like a fifth grader? So that's a really big topic. Let's just riff on that. What are your thoughts? What trends do you see? There's a really cool Twitter thread out there on like the best one page financial plans. Yeah. Um, let's dive in on that topic. So so here's how I, how I would think about it from just sort of the, the advisor value proposition level. The the big plan, the big plan, right? The big, big, beautiful leather bound plan to me what was fundamentally about selling this value proposition of I'm smart, I've got expertise. Like you don't know financial things, I know financial things. I'm the expert. You pay me money as the expert. I do the analysis you literally can't do by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I will bring you the results of this analysis of your very complex situation and provide you a series of recommendations. And, and just, it, it, that's like, that's fundamentally a, a, an expert transaction. And I think a, like a pretty good solid one from that, that perspective, right? In, the, in that domain, basically like the better the advisor, the thicker the plan, or more directly, like the better the advisor, the longer the list of financial planning recommendations I can give you, right? Like, a good financial advisor can analyze this client and find eight recommendations. A great financial advisor can analyze the same client and find 13 recommendations. And then a, a fantastic leading financial advisor can take the same client's information and find 19 different financial planning recommendations that would add value in this client's life. Mm -hmm. And it was all built around the depth of expertise and our ability to show the expertise. The fundamental thing that I think is, is shifting now is that the value equation is beginning to shift a little. We do still need to have the expertise, right? I'll just like say that out of the gate. Like you do still need to have the expertise. Otherwise you're just giving recommendations that could be actually factually wrong and then people just get hurt out of ignorance. So the relevance of expertise doesn't go away. But we can't just be dispensers of expert information anymore. Because if you really just want expert information, if you want to ask a complex question and get a, and get an answer to it, the internet's good at that. Apparently, pretty soon, ChatGPT is going to be good at that. Like, computers are good at spitting out the answers to questions. And the the fundamental shift I think that's happening now is we're not just going to get paid based on having the answer. We're going to get paid to help clients implement the answer. Now, a lot of us historically have said, well, yeah, I do implementation. In fact, the roots of our industry was all about implementation because it was the insurance and investment product that we implemented that we got paid for to make the financial plan uh, economically viable for us to deliver. But we, to me, we kind of had this breakdown that when planning went towards expertise complexity and the plans got longer, right? The difference between a, 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 an okay planner, a great planner, and an amazing planner was whether you found like eight or 13 or 19 financial planning recommendations for the client. But if you think about that from the client's perspective, like, you know what you do as a client when someone comes at you with 19 financial planning recommendations to add value in your financial life? You don't look at them and think, wow, that person is brilliant. Look at all the recommendations they came up with. The script in most clients has more something more along the lines of, wow, I didn't realize my life was that screwed up. Like, I didn't even know. I mean, I came to an advisor because I was not confident in my financial uh, planning 
decisions in life. That's why I sought an advisor. But I actually didn't know I could make 19 different mistakes at once. Like, apparently, I'm so bad at this. I may as well just give up on financial life now. Like, I, you know, 19 recommendations basically means I get an F in life at this point. And it's just depressing. Like, it, I mean, it's just, it's outright depressing for clients to come at them with that many recommendations. It, it's demotivating and can be outright destructive because people just look at that and say, wow, like I'm basically a lost cause. I didn't even know I could do that many things wrong. But like, why even bother at this point? Imagine a world where the primary way that an advisor is evaluated is the percentage of the financial planning recommendations that their clients actually implement. The percentage of financial planning recommendations that your clients actually implement. So you don't get credit for giving them a list of 19 and then having them be so overwhelmed that they leave and walk out the door. Giving them three that are meaningful and having to actually implement three is way better. Because frankly, if they wanted the list of 19, they could probably at some point give their situation artificial intelligence and it'll list out 19 things that they could be doing differently. But again, that's just demotivating. Mm -hmm. If I want to get to what, what do I actually do to implement this? How do I get to a decision I'm comfortable with, have buy and feel motivation to follow through on the recommendation and actually take action to implement it? It's an entirely different skill set. And to say the least, what it starts with is not coming to the table with 19 financial planning recommendations and a 172 page financial plan, because that's just setting up the overwhelm. I'm just so far gone. I may as well give up on this. And that to me is really the essence of what's coming forth in these one page financial plans. Like it's not just about simplifying down and getting it all to one page. The common theme that I see on most of those one page plans comes down to, to sort of three core elements. One of the most interesting things to me about almost every one page plan that I see, it's got action items. It's got next steps, not 19 planning recommendations. The three or fewer that we're working on right now. And then every time we update that one pager, they they change as we check things off the list and bring new things into the picture. And so that combination of sense of purpose, sense of progress, and what are our next steps? Like those are the elements that drive action, that drive behavior change. Like you can do it. Here's why you're doing it. You are already succeeding and making progress. Here's the thing that we're going to tackle next. And as we check that off, it feels really good. And then we want to do more and we and we continue the momentum. And so the essence to me of what you're seeing, like, yes, one page plan is neat in and of itself. And, and I love some of the beautiful ones that people have put out there. But the real thing to me that's happening underneath is we're beginning this shift from my value is I give you this expertise which I demonstrate through the length of the plan and the weight of the plan and the volume of financial planning recommendations. And we're moving into a realm where we're judged by action and implementation. And the tools to help people take action are not the same as the tools that are built just to show our expertise. And so the expertise still has to be there. Even most advisors that I know that are doing one-page financial plans, like the rest of the financial plan is still there. Like it's still in the software. They may still print it. It's like a one page plan with a 50 page technical appendix behind it because we do have to still, I think just from the advisor, we have to show our expertise at some point. Otherwise, like I can write all of, I can write all of your financial planning recommendations on three by five index card. But if I actually give it to you as a three by five index card, you're going to assume I didn't even do the work and you're not going to take the recommendations because they're not credible, even though they actually really might be the right thing to do. So there is still a need that I think we have to demonstrate credibility and to demonstrate our expertise and to show that when I give you this short list of things to do, it's because there's many, many, many pages of work and analysis that went into this. But the essence, I think, of the shift that you're seeing is when you start driving towards questions like, how do you maximize the number of recommendations that the client actually implements? You don't give them a list of 19 action items to implement.